السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام الأتمان الأكملان على لبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ما بعد Brothers and Sisters of Faith حياكم الله Here we are back on the tafsir class after a long minute since we've been in it and uh, we thank you for the support and reminding us that it was Ayah 38 indeed Today we have a, a, a new guest uh, a VIP uh, guest of honor to replace his uh, elder brother Musab. Uh, Muadh will be taking over. As you can see, the family is stri striving to make sure that I'm not the one who recites. Right? And my recitation is so bad by any means necessary. Pick up someone from the street to recite, but not Abu Musab, which is fine. Um, I'll accept that. Uh, so we have Muadh who's and excited and preparing, mashallah, for like, it seems like a whole year so that he could recite these few ayat. So, uh, yani, make dua for him and hopefully it will it will work out. So, ayah 38, faddal ya Sheikh Mu'ad. They can't hear him. You sound very far. Where is the mic on his thing? Which mic is he using? Oh. Continue. Okay, they're saying that the audio is not that great. There's an issue then. Don't use these headphones. What, didn't you guys have another alternative? Next time you can just recite from my mic. No issue. Tayyib, Zakum la khair. It's okay. It's his first time. Uh, it's the headphones' fault. So Ayah 38 reads, And Pharaoh said, O oh, eminent ones, I have not known you to have a God other than me. <laughs> then ignite for me, O oh, Haman, a fire upon the clay and make for me a tower that I may look at the God of Moses. And indeed, I do think he is among the liars. And he was arrogant, he and his soldiers in the land without right, and they thought that they would not be returned to us. So we took him and his soldiers and threw them into the sea. So see, how was the end of the wrongdoers? All right. So... وَقَالَ فِرْعَوْنُ مُتَجَرِّئًا عَلَىٰ رَبِّهِ وَمُمَوِّهًا عَلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ السُّفَهَاءِ أَخِفَّاءِ الْعُقُولَ So Pharaoh said in, uh, in the context of having some major arrogance against his Lord and also in an effort to deceive his feeble-minded, unintellectual uh, followers and tribe, his people, his qawm. And honestly, brothers and sisters in faith, the more I think about it, the more disturbed I become. Y'all saw the clip about Al-Mawlid al-Nabawi. You know, it was it was straightforward, very composed. I'm not offending anyone. I'm not attacking anyone. I'm just I'm just highlighting facts, undeniable, indisputable, non-negotiable facts. And you would think that the Muslims 
who have any intellect or understanding of Islam will have no problem in accepting that advice that celebrating the, the birthday of the Prophet ﷺ, which, which sounds ridiculous in and of itself. The idea of saying celebrating the birthday, you know, when you think of birthdays, you think of uh, children and cakes and, and gifts uh, is baseless. Do you all see the attacks? Do you guys see the actual comments from the people? Like, are, are, are people serious? And this is very common. This is, and, and the more I see this, the more I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to preserve our intelligence and our intellect and our ability to use them to comply with this religion, not so that we can argue within his religion. But you see, this is the way of, uh, it's the way of the, the deviants. There's Fir'aun. Fir'aun is going to use the same tactics to confuse and mislead his people who are sufaha. They are, they are foolish, feeble-minded. So the sheikh is actually describing them as being foolish, feeble-minded people. And today, unfortunately, this applies to so many Muslims who are foolish and feeble-minded. When it comes to those issues. And whatever their leader tells them, they buy. Whatever their shuyukh, their maulanas, and their uh, uh, peers, or whatever you want to call them, whatever they tell them, they, they follow. And they fight and they argue. Yani, what did he say? I don't know of any other God. I don't know of any other God for you other than me. Fir'aun is saying to the people, I alone, I am your ilah, I am your deity. I am your object of worship. Had there been another God besides me, لعلمته, I would have known about him. فانظر إلى هذا الورع التام من فرعون. Look at this very, uh, 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 very subtle concern that Pharaoh had. حيث لم يقل, he didn't say ما لكم إله غيري. He didn't say there's no other God but me. بل تورع وقال ما علمت لكم من إله غيري. No, he was careful and said, I don't know of any other God for you besides me. He didn't say there is no God besides me. He said, I just don't know of any God besides me. And that's because according to them, he is the virtuous, he is the virtuous scholar. The one, no matter what he says, whatever he says, it is the truth. And whatever he commands them, they obey him. فلما قال هذه المقالة التي قد تحتمل أن ثم إله غيره after he made that statement which leaves the door or the possibility for another God being there besides him for another God being there besides him أراد أن يحقق النفي الذي جعل فيه ذلك الاحتمال he went on to now establish the negation which left that possibility open فقال لهامان so he said to هامان فأوقد لي يا هامان على الطين ليجعل لي لبنا من فخار so that he may build for him a, a tower made of clay فاجعل لي صرحا أي بناء عاليا so build for me a, a tall construction a tall construction لعلي أطلع إلى إله موسى وإني لا أظنه كاذبا ولكن سنحقق هذا الظن ونريكم كذب موسى. So I may look at the God of Moses and I think he's a liar, but we want to verify this assumption and show you that Moses is a liar. Of course, brothers and sisters in faith, حياكم الله, Allah bless you all. If you remember, uh, you can turn off the AC by the way. If you remember our uh, Aqidah class, 
then you will remember that this is one of the evidences that we use against the Ash'aris and the Maturidis to prove that Allah is above a throne. And to prove that the aqidah of Allah being above, this, above the skies, above the creation, in the state of transcendence above his throne, is established by not only the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam, but rather taught by all the prophets. And the biggest evidence is that had Moses not been teaching the people what was already in their fitrah that Allah is above, why in the world would Fir'aun want to build a tower to look at the Ilah of Musa? Do you guys see how crazy explicit this is as a proof for the aqidah of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah? Why would Pharaoh want to prove Musa to be a liar? Mind you, Fir'aun wanted to prove that Musa was a liar. How did he want to prove that he was a liar? You're saying that Allah is above? Tayyib Haman, come here, Uleh. Build for me a, a tower made of clay and let it be a tall tower. And I'm going to ascend and I'm going to go up on this tower to prove to you that there is no God. Once I make it over there, I'm going to look around. There's not going to be any ilah and then I'm going to prove to you that Musa is a kathab. <laughs> so Fir'aun Fir must have been taught and educated that Allah is above. Otherwise, he would not have even made that request. You see the explicitness of our aqidah? And I will be making the video, inshallah, maybe later on today, the second uh, part of our reaction to these Diobandis. And you will see those Maulanas three times, three times. Ikhwan, three times in a video, he will point up when, he's, when he swears by Allah. Three times he will point up. And then when confronted, he will give you some funny answer that I will keep as a surprise for you until I actually make the reaction video. Insha'Allah ta'ala. Uqsum billah ajib ya akhi. Ya akhi, when a person is led astray by their desires, a'udhu billahi min ash shaytan rajim Look, it's one thing to be a follower of desires in terms of sins, okay? It's one thing to, to be weak. I am the weakest person I know when it comes to sins. I'm not going to bluff and be around the bush. I am a miskeen. I am da'if in all respect. The fitna of sins is a dangerous and difficult fitna. But what is more dangerous than the fitna of following your uh, uh, weakness in sins is the fitna of following your desires in having a corrupt understanding of Islam. The shubuhat. Not the shahawat. There's shubu shahawat and shubuhat. Shahawat desires. Desires. You fall into haram. A'udhu billah. May Allah forgive us all. We're all guilty. Hello? This is desires. But uh, the desires of shahawat of, of sinfulness. But the shubuhat, the doubts, wherein you don't understand and comprehend and apply Islam properly, yo, that is wild. That is, the, your people have no more, under, people are crazy. The people go crazy, ikhwan, akhawat, wallah, it's mind-blowing what I read every single day, everywhere I go, everywhere I go. The things I read, the things I see, my mind can't even... Can't even grasp what's going on. Like, is this a dream? Is this like, is this some alternative world? Am I, am I dreaming? Am I imagining? Are people really this, this, this dumb? Or are they this crazy? Like, where do we start? How, how did we get here? But I'll leave that as a surprise till the end. But sufficient for now to know that Fir'aun had a better Aqidah, a better understanding of Aqidah of al sunnah wal jamaa than the modern day Ash'aris and Maturidis. Not even modern day, it's Ash'aris and Maturidis in general. Fir'aun. Because Musa had taught him that Allah is above and therefore he wanted to go up into the skies. Now ask them, ask, bring the, the Ash'ari. They tell you that Allah is يعني, لا جهة تحده ولا مكان يحتويه وأصلا, if you look at the planet earth if we are down here, then how does they up? I say, what, 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 was, what was then Fir'aun doing? Like? What did Fir'aun, why was Fir'aun doing what he was doing then? What did Musa, what did that Musa, did Musa teach him the philosophy that you were teaching? Oh, by the way, Fir'aun, if you're on this part of the planet, 
uh, then it's not going to work because you have to be on the other side of the planet. Did they go into all this philosophical nonsense? Absolutely not. على كل حال إلى الله المشتكى وعليه التكلان ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم أي uh, so what happened here فانظر هذه الجرأة العظيمة على الله look at this great audacity against Allah التي ما بلغها آدمي that no human being had reached كذب موسى وادعى أنه الله first of all he belied موسى then he claimed that he is Allah he belied موسى then he claimed that he is Allah حلو ونفى أن يكون له علم بالإله الحق and he denied having any knowledge of the true God وفعل, وفعل الأسباب لي, لي, ليتوصل إلهي موسى and then he followed the means available to reach Moses God وكل هذا ترويج all this is a form of uh, promotion he's just doing a promotion he's promoting his deviance and his nonsense ولكن العجب من هؤلاء الملأ الذين يزعمون أنهم كبار المملكة المدبرون لشؤونها but what is amazing what is wondrous about those, uh, those uh, the elite of his uh, community, those who claim that they are, those who claim that they are the most royal, the most elite in the kingdom, and the ones who are arranging its affair, how did this man actually play around with their intellect? And he belittled their minds. How did he manage to do that? وهذا لفسقهم الذي صار صفة راسخة فيهم and this is because of their corruption that has become a permanent quality of theirs فسد دينهم their religion was, uh, has become corrupt ثم تبع ذلك فساد عقولهم ثم تبع ذلك فساد عقولهم then their corruption of this religion was also followed by the corruption of their intellect and this is the state of many of the Muslims today because they have already adopted a methodology other than that of the Salaf, and they have adopted an Aqidah other than that of the Salaf, they have accepted an innovation, the innovations that the people have added within Islam and what they have added to Islam, Allah Azza wa Jal punished them by making their minds becoming corrupt as well. Their minds become corrupted as well as a byproduct, as a consequence, as a ramification of you denying the truth, Allah will punish you by taking away your ability to have critical and analytical thinking. فَلَمَّا زَاغُوا أَزَاغَ اللَّهُ قُلُوبَهُمْ قُلُوبَهُمْ When they deviated, Allah caused their hearts to deviate. وَنُقَلِّبُوا أَفْئِدَتَهُمْ كَمَا لَمْ يُؤْمِنُوا بِهِ وَنُقَلِّبُوا أَبْصَارَهُمْ وَأَفْئِدَتَهُمْ كَمَا لَمْ يُؤْمِنُوا بِهِ أَوَّلَ مرة. And we will turn over their sights and their minds and their hearts just like they refused to believe in it the first time. As though they never believed in it the first time. When they deny it the first time, Allah Azza wa Jal will, cause, will, will punish them with this kind of retaliation. So when you choose a religion and a way other than the way of the Salaf, then you will be punished in this dunya and hopefully not in the Akhirah. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to forgive and pardon all the Muslims in the Akhirah. But the, the early and the immediate Punishment is that your, your mind will no longer serve you to analyze this deen and follow it. Your mind will become a, a weapon, a tool of destruction. Wallahi, your mind will become a tool of your own destruction. The more intelligent you are, the worse your condition is. The more intelligent you are, the dumber the statements are that you make. This is what's happening right now. The more intellectual, the more deviated. And look at the tens of examples of these public speakers with the multitude of followers who are, who are presumed and perceived to be more intellectual and more intelligent than others. But because they are following a way other than the way of the Salaf, the only thing that they utter is absolute deviance and uh, destruction upon themselves and upon the Ummah. That's why the Shaykh Rahimahullah said, فَنَسْأَلُكَ أَلَّهُمَّ الثَّبَاتَ عَلَى الْإِيمَانِ We ask you, O oh Allah, we ask you, O oh Allah, firmness upon Iman. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen, because believe me, brothers and sisters, if Allah does not give us this thabat, then you have absolutely nothing to hold on to. Don't think it's because we're special. When I make these remarks and when I say these statements, I don't believe at any point that I am special or you are special. We are simply 
included in the ultimate mercy of Allah. This is the favor of Allah upon us ultimately. It is the ultimate favor upon us from Allah ultimately. We're just the recipients of this favor. It's not because we're outsmarted others. But at least we could say from, from, a, from a sincere point of view that I know that I don't play around with the deen of Allah. I can say this sincerely and in the most blunt and straightforward way. I've never and I don't intend and I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to keep me this way. I never ever play around with the deen of Allah. I am a sinful person. That's my own business. But in terms of approaching the textual evidences and try to uh, twist them and maneuver and play around with them for some interest of some sort in order to prove this or disprove that and, and deal with the religion as a joke, a'udhu billah. And that is what perhaps could be the reason why Allah Azza wa Jal remains to bestow his, his ultimate favor upon us in this sense. And that, oh Allah, we ask you not to deviate our hearts after you have guided us. And that guide provide us from you uh, mercy. Verily, you are the bestower. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanaka wa bihamdik. Now, um, so ayah 39. So him and he was arrogant and his soldiers in the land. So they were arrogant uh, against the slaves of Allah. And they also punished them and treated them in the worst way. And they also were arrogant against the messengers of Allah and what those messengers have brought for them of these signs. So they belied them. And they claimed that whatever they are upon is, is higher and loftier than what the messengers have brought and better than the, what the messengers have brought. And they thought that to us they will not return. That's why they had that audacity. Otherwise, had they known or had certainty had they had certainty that they will return to Allah then you would have never seen of them what, you, what has happened. But the truth is that they don't truly believe that they will return to Allah subhanahu so we took them and their soldiers uh, when they uh, uh, we, we took him and the soldiers when they were persistent on their stubbornness and their transgression so we threw them into the sea it was the worst the most evil of outcomes and the biggest loss in terms of ROI. They were followed with the, the worldly, perpetual, worldly punishment that is connected all the way to the hereafter punishment. And look at the uh, words that Allah Azza wa Jal used. Look at the belittlement of the kuffar and uh, their their deviance. So we threw them into the sea. So Fir'aun was walking around all, you know, haughty and telling the people, "Ana Rabbukum al-A'la wa ma alimtu lakum min ilahin ghairi. I don't know of any other god for you besides me." And I am your Lord, the Most High. And those rivers are flowing beneath me. Allah Azza wa Jal, after this whole show of it says, فَنَبَذْنَهُمْ So we threw them into the sea. Like you throw a bag of trash. Like you throw some leftover. Like you throw some dead animals. Like you throw something that you don't want. You throw them. They were just thrown into the sea. And they were humiliated in this manner. And it reminds me of the ayat. In Surah Nuh, مِمَّا خَطِيئَاتِهِمْ أُغْرِقُوا فَأُدْخِلُوا نَارًا 
Yeah, I discarded them. I like that, Muhammad. I like that very much. Zakallah khair. That is a very particular, that is the best word. See, that's why no, be, strengthening your language is important. May Allah forgive me for my shortcomings. So if you have better vocabulary, you'll be able to come up with better explanations. Discarded them is an absolutely specific and the most accurate term I could think. Just like, psh. You discard something, خلاص, you don't need it anymore. You're done with it. You've used it. You've abused it. Now you just throw it away. al what was I saying? Hey, uh, Because of their sins, they were drowned. And they were admitted into the fire. From the sea, into the fire. فَلَمْ يَجِدُ لَهُمْ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ المهم, uh, سبحان الله العظيم. سورة نوح, والله, one of, the, one of the most beautiful surah in the Quran. Yeah, I remember the Pakistani guy who was making fun of Fir'aun. Ahsant, ya Abdullah. Tayyip, ayah 41. Tfaddal, ya Mu'ad, read over here because I think your mic doesn't work. I can't turn on the mic. It's okay if they see you, Baba. What are you, an alien? Yalla, Sheikh Ta'al. Mu'ad, I will read on my own then. Okay. So now you're shy. You forgot what you're doing in the basketball game. You guys should have seen what this guy did in the basketball game. Everybody stop watching the game. They're watching him. Baba, just read Ayah 41, 40, 41, and 42. You're asking too many questions. I can't see. Just read. Yalla, Hajj. It's almost tomorrow. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وجعلناهم أئمة يدعون إلى النار ويوم القيامة لا ينصرون وأتبعناهم في هذه الدنيا لعنة ويوم القيامة هم من المقبوحين ولقد آتينا موسى الكتاب من بعد ما أهلكنا القرون الأولى بصائر للناس وهدى ورحمة لعلهم يتذكرون شكرا جزيلا يا بزورة ولد صغير thank you sir that was that was good, mashallah. Tayyip. Uh, and we made them leaders inviting to the fire. And on the day of resurrection, they will not be helped. And we caused to overtake in this world, to overtake them in this world, a curse. And on the day of resurrection, they will be of the despised. And we gave Moses the scripture after we had destroyed the former generations as enlightenment for the people and guidance and mercy that they might be reminded. All right. أَيْجَعَلْنَا فِرْعَوْنَ وَمَلَأَهُ مِنَ الْأَمَّةِ الَّذِينَ يُقْتَدَى بِهِمْ Allahu Akbar. We made Fir'aun and his uh, people, we made Fir'aun and his uh, people uh, from the leaders that are followed. Fir'aun and his, mala, his close uh, elite uh, members of his chamber, if that's what we want to call them, they became leaders to be followed. And they followed into the abode of humiliation and wretchfulness. So they were imams of dalal. Huh? So that way, when people trip and they say, Ya Akhi, Ya Akhi, how could you say this about the Sheikh? The Sheikh was an imam. He was a sheikh. We say, yes, ya habibi. There is a sheikh of hidayah and there's a sheikh of dalal. There's an imam of hidayah and an imam of dalal. They are imams of guidance and imams of misguidance. And it is obligatory on the people of da'wah and the people of knowledge who know to highlight to the layman and the average Muslim who is the imam of guidance and who is the imam of misguidance. If you want to take your religion from a person where you would stand before Allah, when you stand before Allah, who would you want to take your religion from? Imam Al-Albani, rahimahullah, or Imam Yusuf Al-Qaradawi? Who would want to choose Yusuf Al-Qaradawi over Al-Albani? How? 
And if we don't show you the differences, then how will you know? You have to know these things. There's no such thing as everybody makes mistakes, so let it slide. Yeah, well, everybody makes mistakes, but we cannot let it slide. Some mistakes are graver than others. Some mistakes are worse than others. Some mistakes are fundamental. Some mistakes are regarding the branches. Some mistakes are regarding the principles and the, and the roots. And those are fundamental things that have to be said and, and, and articulated to the people. It's part of our job. It is part of our job and responsibility. It is not an entertainment session or an entertainment center. Everybody who keeps saying that these uh, clips or these talks are being made for views, I say to you, what do I get from views? What do we get from views? Let's say I got 10 million views and I get zero dollars. I don't have ads. I don't make money from YouTube. Wallah al -Azim, we haven't received a single cent from YouTube ever since we were established. Do you think I'm stupid? Like I'm going to come on Yawm Al-Qiyamah before Allah and say that when my deeds are presented that I had 10,000 views for this lecture. So please admit me to paradise. Do you think I believe that views are equivalent to good deeds? I never claimed that and I don't believe that. So if I'm doing this for clout and for views and then what? Okay, and then what? What would be the next thing? Nothing. So please, please have mercy on your soul. There's no point in doing these things for views. It's being done because it falls under the general umbrella of al-nusuh uh, lil-ummah. Uh, to be, have sincere advice for the ummah. Lillahi wa li rasulihi wa kitabihi as you know in the hadith. It's an obligation for you to advise the, the entirety of the Muslim ummah. ad din nasiha Religion is good advice. For who? To who? Everybody. Everybody. You have to be sincere. This falls under the general umbrella of al-amr bil-ma'roof wa nahal munkar Enjoining what is good, forbidding what is evil. It falls under the general umbrella of التعاون على البر والتقوى to aid one another in righteousness and and uh, and and piety and not aiding one another in on ithm ولا تعاون على الاثم والعدوان and don't aid one another in transgression and in in sin and transgression it's so many different aspects of Islam fall under this it's actually a form of jihad في سبيل الله it's a form of fighting in the cause of Allah and according to many of the scholars of the past this type of jihad is even superior to the one that is done on the battlefield the one wherein you expose the deviants, you expose the deviants, you highlight the issues, you highlight the problems, you call out what needs to be called out. And لا تخافوا في الله لو متلائم. You don't fear regarding Allah the, the blaming of the blamers. You don't care. You don't care about the ramifications. You don't care about the backlash. You, you highlight it in spite of the people cursing you and hating you. Don't you think the average person would want uh, uh, you know you would want nothing but love don't you think i could i could put on a mufti bank approach do you think i'm able to do a mufti bank approach of course i can i'm i'm a good actor i could put on an act and turn this channel into some mufti bank stuff and believe me we will jump from i don't know how many we have now 60000 uh, subscribers we will jump to uh, a billion in 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 weeks time in a month's time put on some extra beautiful clothing and shimag and igal and have this lovely background and come with all these beautiful messages that are very well selected. Nothing but love. We we'll love your brother. We we'll love this. We we'll love your neighbor. We we'll love your uncle. We we'll love the cat down the street. We we'll love the rat that eats your rice. We'll nothing out there that you don't love. The entire thing. You could. I could. We could do that. And then we will be, hey... MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. And then what, ya akhwan? You see, that's what the people don't understand. Yeah, we'll start knitting, exactly. And bring a cat and feed it peanuts who comb its hair, who madri ish, kalam fadi. Kalam fadi. That's not how we roll, man. That's not how it goes. We could, but we don't. Because we are straightforward, and honest about the truth, look how much hate we get. 
Look how much hate I get. I'm constantly getting cursed out and being called a wobbler and a murtad and a munafiq and a kafir and a Yahudi. Yahudi, this is like a common right now. Abu, Mus Abu Musad al-Yahudi. You know, <laughs> people love those terms. Abu Musad al-Yahudi and najdi al-Wahhabi. Al-Wajdi and najdi They've come up with names for me. Any human being will be hurt. We're all, we're, we're humans, we're, we're emotion. We're people of, we're emotional beings. We're, we're not a tree. So naturally, you're going to be disturbed by these, right? And you would want to not want, you would want to not be called these names and not have to fight with the Muslims and not have to argue, of course. But if it's going to be on the expense of compromising the truth, then forget you. Then we will do what we're doing. And this is the type of jihad. Fi sabirillah. May Allah Azza wa Jal accept it. This is what we're able to do in this day and time. Followers are low. Little in number. No problem. We're getting a, a lot of heat. No problem. A lot of hate. No problem. But can I stand on Yawm Al-Qiyamah before Allah and say, I have done my best within what I knew, within what I learned, within what I understood. Have I done my best to convey? Alhamdulillah. According to my ability, this is all I'm able to do. So this is the approach. This is the mentality via which we operate. And I hope you understand. And I'm, I'm, I'm highlighting this because sometimes we all need the reminders. I'm actually reminding myself. And I'm, I'm, I'm actually establishing an evidence and proof against myself by reminding myself of these facts. And in the process, you could also see and, and you know, Use it against me in the future. La qaddar Allah. Say, hey, this is what you were about. Why are you changing? Okay? Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. Taib. So, وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ لَا يُنصَرُونَ مِنْ عَذَابِ اللَّهِ On the day of judgment, they will not be uh, aided from the punishment of Allah. فَهُمْ أَضْعَفُ شَيْءٍ عَنْ دَفْعِهِ عَنْ أَفُسِهِمْ They are the weakest thing to be able to repel away the punishment of Allah. وَلَيْسَ لَهُمْ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ مِن وَلِيِّ وَلَا نَصِيرًا They will not have besides Allah any wali, any aid, wala nasir, and no one to aid them, and no one to guard them, and no one to protect them. No protector, and no assistant. Naam. Did we read Ayah 42? Eh. وَأَتْبَعْنَاهُمْ وَأَتْبَعْنَاهُمْ فِي أَيْهِ الدُّنْيَا لَعْنَةً أَيْ وَأَتْبَعْنَاهُمْ زِيَادَةً فِي عُقُبَتِهِمْ وَخِزِيهِمْ فِي الدُّنْيَا لَعْنَةً يُلْعَنُونَ So we increase them on top of all this, in this world, that they will also be, they will have a curse. وَلَهُمْ عِنْدَ الْخَلْقِ الثَّنَاءِ الْقَبِيحِ وَالْمَقْتُ وَالذَّمْ And among the people, they will get nothing but uh, uh, disgrace and hatred and, and belittlement. وَهَذَا أَمْرٌ مُشَاهَدٍ This is something that is viewed and visible and seen. فَهُمْ أَئِمَّةُ الْمَلْعُونِينَ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَمُقَدِّمَتِهِمْ So they are the, the leaders of those who are cursed in this dunya and they are in the forefront. وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ هُمْ مِنَ الْمَقْبُوحِينَ And on the day of resurrection, they will be of the despised. المبعدين, those who will be distant from Allah. الْمُسْتَقْذَرَةُ أَفْعَالِهِمْ Those whose, whose deeds will be, uh, uh, disc, people will be disgusted by them. الَّذِينَ اجْتَمَعَ عَلَيْهِمْ مَقْتُ اللَّهِ وَمَقْتُ خَلْقِهِ وَمَقْتُ أَنفُسِهِمْ And the, regarding them, three things uh, uh, were united. The hatred of Allah to them, the hatred of the creation to them, and the, the, them hating themselves. Even on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, they will hate themselves for what they had done. Tayyip. Uh, Ayah 43, insha'Allah ta'ala, we will cover then uh, in the next class. Oh no, I have time. وَلَقَدْ أَيْتَيْنَ مُوسَى الْكِتَابَ هُوَ التَّوْرَةِ So we gave Musa the book, which is the Torah. مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا أَهْلَكْنَا الْقُرُونَ الْأُولَى After we destroyed... Uh, sorry guys, oh my God. <laughs> Yo. Oh my goodness. Hey, hey, hey. It's time, time out, time out. Let me just finish the ayah. Oof. Alladheena Allah musta'an. Alladheena kana khatimatun fil ihlaak al-aam fir'awna wa junoodahu. Wa hadha dalilun ala annahu ba'da nuzul al-tawrat inqata' al-halaak al-aam. Tayyip. So we gave Musa the Torah after we destroyed the previous nation. Uh, the nations. Those whose end... Uh, so the last group of people to, to have this mass destruction, this eradication, was Fir'aun and his people. And this is an evidence that after the Torah was sent, there was no more eradication of any nation. 
وشرع جهاد الكفار بالسيف instead it was legislated to fight the disbelievers with the sword بصائر للناس أي, أي كتاب الله الذي أنزله على موسى فيه بصائر الناس the book of Allah the, the Torah which Allah sent down upon Musa had insights had guidance for people أي أمور أي أمور يبصرون بها ما ينفعهم وما يضرهم matters through which they see what will benefit them and what will uh, harm them فتقوم الحجة على العاصي so the evidence is established against the disobedient one وينتفع بها المؤمن and the believer will benefit from it فتكون رحمة في حقه وهداية له إلى الصراط المستقيم so it become mercy in his favor and a guidance for him to the straight path ولهذا قال وهدى ورحمة لعلهم يتذكرون so it is uh, an enlightenment enlightenment for the people and the guidance and mercy that they might be reminded طيب so that inshallah will conclude and now uh, next week, inshallah, we'll do ayah number 44. Sorry, now we can do the class. Stop sharing. Oh, too late. Can I? Is there a piano? Oh, my goodness. Here we are. Okay. Yalla. If I made tawbatan nasuha for backbiting, will Allah make it so that on the day of judgment he would compensate that backbitten person without my good deeds being taken away? Um, the, 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 it is recommended by the scholars that if you have done this tawbah nasuha from backbiting someone that you actually seek forgiveness from that person. If it's not going to create a bigger issue, seek forgiveness from this person so that you have nothing to worry about on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. If you believe, if you believe that uh, admitting to him that you had backbitten him and it will create a bigger fitna, then the scholars say you try to speak good of him in the same gathering where you used to speak ill of him. Tamam, inshallah, hopefully you, you, will, you will be free from any compensation on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Naam. If I am memorizing Quran, it is hard to say Basmala every time I start reciting a surah from the start. So is it permissible to not say the Basmala when beginning a surah? Why is it hard to say Basmala when you're in the beginning of a surah? No, recite the Basmala. Now, if I overstep for Fajr that I wake up late, I'm sinful if I don't pray right away since I'm already late for it. Can I delay it or no? No, you cannot. The Sunnah explicitly say that you, if you sleep for Salah or you forget it, you should pray as soon as you remember or as soon as you wake up. You may not delay it any further. Uh, what to do when music is played in the background of places like work and supermarkets, etc. If everything is predestined by Allah, why do anything? Are you continuing Halwa Maulana? Okay, wait, wait. What do you do when music is played? Don't listen to it attentively. Okay, just you can hear it, but don't listen to it. Uh, if everything is predestined by Allah, why do anything? What is that supposed to mean? And you're using qadar as an excuse for, for being complacent? Are you going to use qadar uh, for being complacent? Okay, but according to you then, if somebody comes and says, I'm going to punch you, tell him everything is predestined by Allah. Why do anything? Yalla, tfaddal, huh? yeah. Give him your chance. What is this idea, Mansoor? What is Mansoor? Am I continuing the hawla, halwa maulana? Yes, inshallah. We have a... We have two episodes coming. One episode where I'm going to uh, do a reaction to that street confrontation between uh, Abdul Halim and uh, brother, what's his name? And the second one is going to be that claim that uh, that we are uh, learning Islam from the Bible and the Christians. The dumbest video on the internet. The dumbest video on the internet today is the one by Maulana Usman. Who said, who has a, 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 a thumbnail of me and a cross, and who claims that Muslims learn the aqidah of the Prophet being on the throne from the Christians? The craziest thing I've ever heard and seen. Yalla, inshallah, we'll keep it coming. Is it permissible to say Prophet is like the father I've never had? No. Ma kana Muhammadan aba ahadim rijalikum. It's, it's that, that the generality of this ayah makes you not want to use that expression. Muhammad was not the father of any of your men. Rather, he is the messenger of Allah and the seal of all prophets. So I would say stay away from making an expression like that. Naam, hayakumullah.
Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Is the first level of ihsan possible to us or is it only for the prophets? How to stay firm with your family as a young man give da'wah to family? Of course it is possible. It is possible that you uh, reach the first level of ihsan and ta'budu Allah ka'annaka tarah. Of course it requires a high level of iman, a lot of knowledge and a lot of abstinence from sinfulness and uh, following one's uh, desires. But it's attainable inshallah. It's not just for the prophets. How to stay firm with your family as a young man? By uh, a uh, equipping, equipping yourself with knowledge. Equipping yourself with knowledge. Are sins done in ignorance, not knowing it's haram and being told it's halal? Are sins done in ignorance, not knowing it's haram and being told it's halal? Excused? Yes, they are excused. Would they require steps for repentance? No, it's not. If you didn't know that it's haram, then you're excused. Now. Here we go again with bayan. If you're if you're praying salah and people behind you don't know and offer you snack and tap you continuously. Yeah, Bayan, look, you cannot be serious, man. Then get mad at you for not taking an after. How to advise them? What, where, where, which, bro, please. How is that a serious question, Bayan? Where, which planet are you living on? Which planet? Who in the world is praying salah and the people are going to tap you, try to give you a snack, and they don't realize that you're praying. You couldn't say, you couldn't raise your voice, and let's say you're, let's say you're, you're okay, okay, I believe you. But this, these are some crazy questions, okay? So I'm praying. Somebody doesn't know that I'm praying. The tap's behind me. I raise my voice. Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Maliki, Yawm I let them hear that I'm praying. I let them hear that I'm praying. And, you know, they get mad, let them, let them burn. Let them burn and, and boil in madness. Do your salah. What in the world, man? Where do you get these questions from? And how come they're always serious? <sighs> Ustad, Iwa, can you give a brief biography of Sheikh Al-Islam Ahmad bin Abdul Halim ibn Abdul Salam ibn Taymiyyah Al-Harrani? Allahu Akbar, ya Sheikh, what a beautiful question. Habibi, I have, I have a, a talk on YouTube which I gave way, way back, 10 something years ago about uh, Ibn Taymiyyah. Please find it on YouTube. I have a little brief uh, biography of Sheikh Al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah on YouTube somewhere. Um, no, no, hello. You can see the monitor. Makana Muhammadun. Naam, ahsant ya Muhammad. Zakallah khair. Did I say Muhammadan? Yeah, Muhammad. Kana tarfa'u al-ism wa tansibu al-khabar. Zakallah khair. Ahsant. Uh, now, next, thank you, Muhammad, for the correction. Salam alaikum, alaikum salam. Is there any punishment done by the government, government for not wearing hijab? Can you speak about the issue in Iran? Uh, is there any punishment done by the government for not wearing hijab? Which government, Habibi, are you referring to? It depends on the countries. And I don't know what's happening with the issue in Iran. I honestly don't care about what happens in Iran. I've seen some posts on Twitter about people burning hijab and whatever. I don't understand what's going on. I never I never followed that because I was too busy with other things. So therefore, I'm not in a position to be making any comments. Make videos uh, of da'wah in video scribe. Animation with hand drawing is haram. Advice to one good faculty at Medina University. Uh, Habibi, if, if it's... Um, if the hand drawing is is including uh, soul possessors like humans or animals, then it's haram. If you're drawing some inanimate objects, then there's nothing wrong with it, inshallah. Kulliyat al Sharia or Kulliyat al Dawa, these would be the, the, the two I would recommend. Naam. I'm confused. Is watching space and scientific documentaries haram as they show false things like Big Bang? And do you watch documentaries? Is watching National Geographic haram? There isn't a, a clear-cut answer for all this. It depends on what you're watching. And you could watch these things, and the fact that they have a certain false uh, uh, belief does not mean that it's haram to watch them. That's like coming across anything like uh, that that has some false information that you don't believe it. It, it doesn't. It doesn't harm you. Uh, unless you're weak iman, uh, you have a weak iman, and, and when you read those things, you're you're genuinely affected by them, and you start having doubts. In which case, uh, let them go. 
Uh, I love watching docu documentaries and I do watch documentaries that I see add value to my general uh, information. But um, obviously, whatever the, uh, is haram there, you want to avoid. Yes, they do have music. Some of them have music and this is the part that you don't attentively listen to. So if there's, if there's subtitles, you can mute it. Or when there's music, you can mute it. There's ways around it as long as you're not actively listening to the music. And there's a benefit in what you're watching. Now, uh, many video games have soundtracks or dialogue that are shirk kufur. Even some sports games have music in it with shirky lyrics. Is it permissible to keep these CDs in our home or is it shirk? Uh, no, you should, you should, uh, it's not shirk to keep them, but you should definitely break them and throw them away. If you have CDs that have this type of stuff, get rid of them. Uh, love you for the sake of Allah. May Allah love you. From Quran Hadith, we call Allah Mawlana. Is it permissible to call people Mawlana? Yeah, because the term Mawla is, is one of those terms that is not restricted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The term Mawla uh, is not restricted to Allah. If, uh, you have the Arabs, they use, you know, uh, that when, when a person owned a person, they will say, Fulan, Mawla, Fulan. So that term is used uh, just like the word Rabbul Bayt, the Lord of the house, or Rabbul uh, Amal, the Lord of the uh, the person in charge, basically, of the business. Those terms are, are used uh, and applicable to both Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the creation. And therefore, it is permissible to use the term Mawlana. Uh, there's no nothing wrong with it, inshallah. Now, but of course, not, not in the Diobandi context. Those guys are Ta'bana. Next, when talking to Haman about the tower, which statement of Musa is Fir'aun is, Fir is accusing to be a lie? And indeed, I think that he is from the liars. Meaning, the fact that there is an ilah other than him. That's why I said, Ma alintu lakum min ilahin ghayri. I don't know of any other God besides me. So he wants to prove that he's lying, that there's no God above, meaning there's no God but Fir'aun. Um, I don't know, yeah, Atif. Atif asks this question every single time. Khutbah <laughs> uh, talks about Bawlid. Is it okay to sleep? No. No, it's not okay to sleep. Ta'ban means tired. It means uh, feeble-minded. It means, it, it could mean many different words depending on the context. Yeah, ta'ban is it's like basic saying you're, you're, you're tired intellectually. It doesn't have to be that you're physically tired. It's, it's actually also intellectually being deficient. Amin, ya Joshua Abu Zubair. Turn on the ACM art, please. So what, where did she go? Uh, is the first level of example I answered that question already. Uh, man, I answered all these questions already. Well, Baba, I don't know what you and your mom are doing. He's posting the questions that I already answered. Is it haram to put a prayer mat for someone that is praying on the floor while they're praying? No, it's not haram. But it's not recommended. Let them pray on the floor. What's the big deal? Especially if that prayer mat has designs and and decorations which distract them in the salah. Next. Can you pray behind Baril Shi Imam? Baril V Imam? Um, you probably want to avoid it just because the general condition of the Baril is that they're, they're beyond the folds of Islam. But I'm not one who will make mass takfir or takfir al ayn on a particular individual without establishing the proof against them. So you would want to avoid it. Now, what makes a country Darul Salam, Darul Islam? I mean the conditions. Well, uh, that's something that the scholars discuss in detail. But fundamentally, the laws of inheritance uh, are from Islam. Matters of marriage and divorce are from Islam. The, uh, the masajid being uh, uh, spread, the establishment of the salah uh, on a country uh, level, 
and not just in certain neighborhoods like the whole country. Uh, basically, the, the law, the general law of the country um, is, is derived from Islam. Um, of course, one daughter of Islam varies from another, but it has to do with the, the Muslim population and the application of the Muslim law in the countries. Now, the fact that there are some interferences and integration with other secular laws and whatever, that will become something that uh, the scholars will discuss and, and basically uh, highlight which country is where in, in this regard. And that's a very massive topic. And it's a very sensitive topic because if you miscalculate uh, or you misjudge, then you could easily fall into doing mass takfir of governments and the people within that country. So uh, that's something that you need to ask senior people of knowledge and not YouTube uh, 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 characters and YouTube people like myself. Now, Yeah, Ustad, does doing dua, durood, including sending two salatations to Prophet Sallallahu or just one? One. Durood is sending one salah upon the Prophet Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Now, at the moment, if I needed to go to Masjid for Fajr, I need to attempt to wake up the guard which will annoy him or leave having the gate unlocked. Bring in a key with me, Will. Cause problems. What should you do? Wake up the guard. Let him be annoyed. Next. Is Masjid Haram, they do Adhan for Tajahud. Is this permissible? In Masjid Haram, they do Adhan for Tahajjud. Is this permissible? Yeah, it's permissible to uh, notify the people about Tahajjud. And it was done at the time of the Prophet Ali Salatu Salam also. There was a dua of Bilal and the dua of Ibn Umm Maktoum. Naam. Ruling on entering a masjid when on menses. It's not permissible for a woman to enter the place of, of prayer while she's on her menses. It is not permissible. Naam, ya Muhammad. We got that. Zakallah khair. We corrected that already. Ma kana Muhammadun. I said Muhammadun. I made a mistake. Any recommendations of da'is in English, <clears throat> especially in the West? Yeah, I've said it a million times. Muhammad Tim Humble probably will be on the top of the list, along with uh, Sheikh Abdurrahman Hassan and Brother Abu Ibrahim Hussein and Brother Abu, uh, Abu Taymiyyah and Sajid uh, Lipim. Nah. In, the, in my masjid, when the imam says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, people kiss their fingers and wipe over their eyes. Any authenticity to this? Absolutely not. I remember I used to see this all the time. But these crazy Sufis, man, they go like this, right? Is it the one? Yeah. I always felt like, say, no, no, let me do it for you. Put my fingers in their eyes and pull out their eyeballs. I'm dangling them like this. Say, no. Are you happy now, you mubtadi'? But of course, that would be very harsh. Uh, expected from a from a pseudo Salafi. Now, of course, we would never do that. But yeah, this is a bid'ah, bid'ah, sayyah. Uh, as Lebanon has three leaders, with the top president being of Maronite Christian, mashallah. Somebody knows the politics. Is it still permissible, for example, Lebanese Muslim make hijrah to that country? No. Uh, uh, Lebanon is not a Muslim country. I mean, Lebanon has Muslims there, but our in our uh, institution, our the whole thing is 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 busted. The fact that we cannot even we're not even allowed to have a Muslim uh, uh, president is is ludicrous enough. That's why when I think about where I would need to live if I were not to live in. Um, Saudi anymore, Lebanon is not on the list of options, subhanAllah. Yeah, sadly. Next is Asgab. Is Asgab only used for the afterlife and Kum or Kum only used for this world? There was a difference. Like, what in the world are you? <laughs> what? What are you saying? What is this? What is Asgab? 
and comb or comb. 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 Comb like comb your hair, but spelled with a K. And you want me to tell you the difference? What in the world are you saying? Yeah. Uh, Ibrahim. <laughs> I know that accent. I love it though. You know, my, how many? Uh, we have a huge, huge uh, amount of brothers from the subcontinent. I love my brothers from the subcontinent. The, 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 the ones upon the way of the Salaf, obviously. I can spell lekker as gab. Mashallah, that fixed it, Yani. No, no, put that one too. Post that one. How to fix a nonsensical question? South Africa represent? Are you South Africa, ya boy? <laughs> represent that you're representing confusion. Do they mean qawm? Ahzab? Let me try to... Uh, uh, Decipher this message. Is as as gab as ahzab only used for the afterlife, and qawm only used for this world? Ahzab could it be? Wallahi, I don't know, ya akhi. Even if that was ahzab and qawm, it wouldn't make sense. Ahzab. Is adab only used for the afterlife and qawm? Adab is, is punishment and qawm is people. Khali wali ya sheikh. You're going to waste our whole life trying to figure out this question. Khalas, yeah. Next time, uh, I don't know. Let Google ask on your behalf. Akhzab qawm? Wallah, I don't understand. Questions from Queens, New York City. Uh, a shout out to NYC, where I used to live. I used to live in New York City, Stan Island. Those were the days, my friend. A brother that uh, was told the cops will be called on him if he attends the masjid. This is the first masjid he prayed at and his local community masjid. The masjid has been refusing to. Speak to him. Can you give some advice? Brother is going through a lot since there's, he has PSD, PSD, PTSD and other issues. I don't even know. I, 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 the, the, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Na H, but the question is too general to give advice. Um, so let him just uh, hang in there. And not, if they're going to call the cops on him, just go and go, don't go to the masjid. He's excused from going to the masjid because of uh, darura. Oh, Allah, I'm Shafak, Allah, wa'afak. Kids playing virtual dice game. Is it allowed? No. No, according to the stricter opinion. Bearing in mind that there's an opinion that allows it. The matter of dice, whether physical dice or virtual dice, is a very, very complicated and controversial topic. You, you could read, honestly, every time I read the opinion of one side, of the opinions, I, I get swayed towards it. You understand? But for sure, the safer side is to stay away from it. Now, is the title king only for Allah? No, it's not. The title king is for Allah and for other kings in this world. And is a human being called himself or being called the king sinful also shirk? No. They could be a person who calls himself king and, and he could be an actual king of a country and it doesn't, it's not shirk at all. Sulaiman was a king. Sulaiman alayhi salatu salam was a king. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was, um, was offered and given it, uh, the choice between kingship and uh, uh, a prophethood, or was it? No, it wasn't prophethood. Kingship and something else. And he chose, he chose uh, uh, just to be an ordinary man. Ali salatu salam. I can't think of the other thing right now, but he chose. Basically, he didn't want al 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 mamlaka wal mulk wa ma ashbah dalik. Naam. Who was it? 
What are your thoughts on Gabriel Ar-Romani and his YouTube videos? Any issues? Yeah, slave. There you go, Fawaz. Any issues? I'm watching them for self-improvement purposes, avoiding sins. Wallahi, yani Gabriel Romani is generally a good brother. He's generally a good brother, but he has a lot of, uh, not a lot, he has, he has some blunders that you need to be mindful of. And as I mentioned in the past, he tends to be very lenient when it comes to putting women or music or haram things on, on in his videos. He doesn't mind um, incorporating haram into his videos uh, or whatever message he's trying to deliver. And that is something that I find problematic. I think he also has videos where he's hosted women on on a show which is also problematic so um you have to be very careful of those concerns now can you pray i'm local the obandi masjid can you pray in our local the obandi masjid or is it better to pray at home as i heard some the obandi have shirk and beliefs and you should not pray behind them the obandis are not as bad as barelvis um so as far as i know you can pray in a diobandi masjid of course, if you give no, it's not better to pray at home. It's always better to pray in a masjid. Hey. Next, the worship should be done by now. It's already 2:40. Mashallah, 101 people when it comes to QA. If a cost of repair to an appliance costs a hundred and the company offers you a maintenance plan for 12 months for five pounds or euros per month. But this covers your repair and any other fault within this period. Is it okay? If it's insurance, then no. If this is a type of insurance, then no. It's not okay. I see some people making dua before doing takbir to start salah and they wipe their face. Is this a bid'ah? Absolutely, it's a bid'ah, Ismail. This is absolutely a bid'ah. So many things that the people do before the beginning of salah are bid'ah. But do they care? They don't care. Allah is Adras Arabi. هل لديك نصه لي؟ Steady. أستاذي يعني. نص نص إيش حبيبي؟ ماذا تريد؟ أي نص تريد؟ جوجله. ستجده في PDF. Next. Uh, what can be said regarding a Muslim ruler who builds churches and temples? What can be said is that this is absolutely not right. It is not right for those uh, churches or temples to be built. Nevertheless, um, who are you and why would you say it? This is the first thing that we want to address because we have to draw the line as to how to deal with the issues that the rulers commit. A ruler commits an issue. This issue is haram or problematic or of shirky nature, whatever it may be. You want to have a stance about it. I understand. The first question you should ask yourself, what do you gain from that? What do you gain from saying? You want to say something. Oh, haram, my Jews, tayyib. What did you Did you enjoy a good or forbidden evil? No, you didn't. All you did was speak out against it. Type. Now, do you have any guidelines in Islam about speaking against rulers? Do we have guidelines? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. So should you be engaging in those activities that may result in harm for you and also violating the way of the Prophet ﷺ? No, you should not engage. So you leave it to the scholars to deal with this particular issue. And you buy your peace of mind and your safety because Allah will not hold you on Yawm Al-Qiyamah will not hold you accountable about what the rulers did with their respective countries. You're a citizen. You're not the person in charge. When you are the king, when you are the ruler, don't build the church, don't build the temple. If they did it, you are not held accountable for it. So when you want to speak out against it, you have to think, is it permissible for me to speak? Because what do I get from speaking against it? If you are an influential person and you're a scholar and speaking against it, um, is done according to the sunnah of the Prophet you're able to speak to them and advise them, then you should. But if you're not, you're a regular person like us, then keep this to yourself. Naam. Me from Bangladesh, Ustad. Can you do Bangladeshi accent? No, I can't. I'm sorry, Hassan. 
I know how to speak the broken Arabic, which the Bangladeshi brothers speak over here in Saudi. Ana ma fi ma'lum anta fi kalam, anta hada fi shuf awal. Hada na fariji sa'a khamsa sabah, hada hasil ish fi wahad asir, hada fi kalam, hada ishrab surah surah. Hada ba'di ana ru'an ta'iji andi bayt. Ba'di ana ma fi lagi, ba'di huwa fi kalam, anta iji, ana ma fi sayara, hada iji taxi, wahad uber. This is like the broken Arabic here in Saudi. When I first came here, I was dying from laughing, especially when I rode the first taxi. And I like I, I told the taxi to take me to a school. The school was called the House of Knowledge. And he's like, Harakif Tariq. I'm like, what? And he's asking me for directions. And I'm thinking, yo, you're the taxi. Turn off the AC. I'm thinking, you're the taxi. Why would I give you directions? Isn't it your job to know the way? And the, the way it worked over here is that the taxi does not know how to get anywhere. You kind of have to tell him where to go, right? And I'm like, I don't know. I had just come to the country like literally a few weeks ago. So I had no way of knowing how to get to the, uh, to the actual school. And then I had to kind of uh, uh, decipher this broken Arabic. I'm like, it's supposed to be, or in Lebanese, or in Saudi, uh, so there's like a million, there's a million ways to say it depending on the dialect and the local language, but definitely not that broken Arabic. Definitely not that broken Arabic. So it took me a while to get a hang of it. And it remains to be funny. And you see a lot of the uh, English uh, people with, with poor English skills. They, you know, the Arabs that speak English, they sound like the non-Arabs speaking Arabic. And it just, sounds, it just sounds funny. We all have to basically work on our language skills, I guess, whether Arabic or English. Stad, what do you think about Usama Dhabi's video about Qaradawi? Uh, yeah, I, I thought that it was, um, I thought that it was, it, I, I, I have some reservation regarding some of the things. I agree with the general outline, but I disagree with some of the details. And I'm just assuming, I'm assuming that uh, Sheikh Abu Usama is not aware of those, of those major violations of Al-Qaradawi. You know what the evidence is for that? Is that Sheikh Abu Usama, Hafizahullah, he watched my video about Yusuf Al-Qaradawi and he sent me a WhatsApp saying, well done. Jazakallah khairan, you've done well. So the fact that he praised my stance about Qaradawi, where I explicitly called him out for all the deviances, proves to me that Sheikh Abu Usama is on the same note except that I did my research about the problems of Qaradawi and the Sheikh spoke in general terms that yes, even if a person was, was uh, a deviant, you could still make dua for him and you could still ask Allah to have mercy on him. Tamam? Yeah, that's all. Now, oh, we're not going to finish today, huh? My husband works in another island. Wow, you guys are living in islands. Uh, I live in the city with my mother and sister. He advised me to get an apartment separately for us. And he wants his brother to live in the same apartment with me. Is there a continuation? In separate room. But I'm not comfortable with that. What is the ruling of that? I'm a new practicing Muslim. I don't know. Sister in Islam, your, your husband needs some serious da'wah. Your husband needs to be sat down with and spoken with and advised. I don't know whether he's a new Muslim himself or newly practicing Muslim himself. Maybe he is ignorant, so he just needs to be educated. What I can tell you flat out 100% that this is not permissible in any way, shape, or form. This is not allowed in any way, shape, or form. This is actually a form of suicide. The Prophet wasallam said, Alhamu maut. The brother-in-law is death. The brother-in-law is death. Yani, you have no idea how dangerous this is. You and his brother living in the same house, it is a matter of time before the shaitan would have destroyed this entire family. It's just a matter of time. Not allowed under any circumstance. Period. To, to, no joke. No joke. Subhanallah. 
I don't know how, I don't know how men will do this man. Oh, it's my brother. Habibi, your brother is a man. Your brother is a man. And your wife is a woman. And that's just the way it is. Hey. How to deal with evil thoughts about Allah? They come all the time and have disturbed me. Well, that's everybody. How to deal with these evil thoughts? By seeking refuge with Allah Azza wa Jal, spitting to your left and thinking about something else. Naam. What does this legend guy want? He's led, these guys are so funny, man. Guys, don't you think it's funny that like an Ash'ari or one of these deviant fools would wake up in the morning and say, oh, Abu Mus'ab has a class. And so let me go over there and be part of the class and be part of the Q&A and harass the people over there. And I'm doing this, yani, fi sabil Allah, and I'm doing this because, you know, I want to just, just to stir trouble. Like how, how stupid do you have to be and how lame do you have to be? And how much of a life you don't have? How much of a life you don't have for you to even have time to come over here and waste our time and harass us with your stupid comments where you're just ranting and ranting and everybody here thinks you're nothing but a doorstep. Like you really have to be very dumb, like next level dumb for you to put yourself in this predicament. You understand? For you to make it a point to present yourself on regular basis, as Iman Homesko said, every week, so you can come and just be, uh, just harass us while everybody's just thinking, are you, are you even, do you even have any, any brain up there in your head or you're, you have a, a, a peanut, you know, cashew, maybe just one cashew in the, for, in, in the shape of a kidney in your mukh and the rest is just hot air. <laughs> Go get a life, ya sheikh. Go get a life, Allah khrabbetak. Go fukkana. Who has time for you? Yani. Ah, sheikh. Uh, the thing, how can a Muslim not try to mend the problems, but instead make problems by their threat to the brother and then tries to contact them? I, I don't know, sister or brother. I don't know. I'm not supporting the masjid. I'm not supporting the masjid uh, at all. But I can't, I can't give you an advice that will solve the problem. Obviously, the problem of the brother with the masjid and cops being involved is, a, is quite a, a complicated, intricate matter that requires somebody on the ground who knows the imam, knows the masjid people, knows the brother who can talk through the, all this. I, sitting here behind my chair, behind a microphone, cannot possibly resolve an issue all the way in NYC when I don't know anybody. So, no, I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do. Nah. Is it true that Muhammad Amin al shanqidi finished the whole Quran in Salah at night? I don't know. I'm not aware of that. It could be true, but I don't know about it. Is there such a thing as planned obsol obsolence in Samsung phones like what Apple did with their products? Please be honest with us. Meaning the phone becomes obsolete? No, there's no such thing with Samsung. Habibi, we have a brand image to maintain. And if we were to make phones that are intended to stop working or to become uh, useless, then this is a, a big form of, of deception. And plus, the people will be dissatisfied with the brand and they will not buy Samsung again. No such thing. I'm telling you, for someone who's been with Samsung for 10 years and who's been to uh, Samsung headquarters in Korea at least 9 to 10 times, who have seen the, the manufacturing of a phone, who is aware of the operating system and the user interface and the user experience and the softwares and everything, there is no such thing, Habibi. Now, what do you say to a woman who says, I have to get an education in case my husband falls sick? I will say to her, um, you have to also work in case your husband doesn't have a job and you have to pay for the bills in case your husband doesn't pay for the bills and you have to bear a child in case your husband doesn't bear a child, which is the case. And if you're going to live with this uh, hypo hypothesis of I have to in case my, then you will never need, uh, you will never lead a normal life. You have to stop driving in case you get in an accident. 
and so on and so forth. You put your trust in Allah Azza wa Jal and you do what you got to do. If nobody told you don't get an education, by the way, just don't let that education require that you go to a mixed university or that it is given precedence over your future and your husband and your kids. If you're able to learn, like right now, my daughter, my daughter, she's learning. Everything is done from home. She learns online. She has classes online. Her education is done online. And we want her to be educated. We want her to be educated so that she can learn her, teach her children. So she could teach, not learn. So she could learn and then teach her children. But as long as she's home, I'm not going to send her out to university because of her education while exposing her to all types of fitan. And if she gets married, I'm not going to have her continue her education while she's married. Khalas, the priority is given to her husband. That's how it goes. Come on now. It's 2.53. This is crazy. No gym today. I have a basketball game tomorrow, inshallah. And I need to uh, preserve my energy. Plus, I'm, I'm feeling a little sore. I want to give it a break. Zakallah khair. What is the meaning of khillu? You always you always did to continue something. Hilu. Hilu means pretty, uh, sweet, beautiful. Hilu. Not khillu. You're sounding like the Maulanas now. This video. Stop making videos and make widows. Yeah, if I'm a Sunni Muslim and want to marry a Sunni woman, but the, her parents are Shia and want her to marry a Shia man, what should I do? She's Sunni, but her parents are Shia? Then you should find her. You should get a guardian for her other than her parents. Let an imam of a masjid, let an imam of a masjid uh, be the, uh, uh, her guardian and represent her in marriage if she's a righteous Sunni woman. Now, can suicide be forgiven by Allah in any case or only eternal damnation? Yes, it can be forgiven by Allah. The scholars uh, have clearly mentioned in the uh, discussion on the matter of intihar wa qatlul dhat wa qatlul nafs annaha laysat laysat kufran billah wa anna sahibuha laysa mukhalladan fil nar. Uh, that the one who kills himself is not a disbeliever, nor will he eternally abide in the hellfire, even though the narrations uh, imply that. But, you know, they understand those narrations in the light of other narrations, and they've concluded that it is not an act that will uh, abide, will make the, the doer abide eternally in the hellfire. Nevertheless, one should be very wary, just in case, just in case Allah Azza wa Jal decreed that they don't get that privilege, then they might up in the, end up in the hellfire forever. And you definitely don't want to do that. Now, what are your thoughts on Sheikh Asimal? Sheikh Asimal. Sheikh Asimal. I don't know him. When I meet him, I will let you know, inshallah. Sure, you mean Asim al Hakim. No, I'm not in touch with him these days. And I've mentioned my thoughts about him a million times. I'm no longer interested in repeating it. Uh, please release a marriage documentary. You will get a lot of views. Who said that I'm doing anything for views? Yeah, Muhammad Hamza. And what do you mean a marriage documentary? <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? I already have like five, six lectures on marriage which technically, if put together, are a documentary. Yalla, everybody see? Khalas, we got our uh, uh, sign already. One person is going for Dhuhr, another person is going for Maghrib, meaning we should be done, because it's almost Asrir also. Taib, yalla, subhanakallah, bihamdik. Ashadu Allah, ashadu Allah, ilaha illa anta, astaghfiru katubu alaykum. We'll see you tomorrow, inshallah, in Aqeedah class. Yalla, salamu alaykum.